it Sonia with Junk Monkey Paint Company and thanks for coming back for another vlog. I appreciate all the messages that I got yesterday. Uh, you know, sharing with you guys the junkie for profit side of things has been something that's been on my mind for a while and I wondered if that was would be something that you guys would be interested in. Yes, you guys have watched me for a long time find pieces and thrift and bargain hunt and all that good stuff and then paint the pieces, but that is the part that we really haven't gotten into. So I'm excited to do that for you guys here on our YouTube channel. And yes, I read every single one of the comments yesterday. And so for those of you who ask questions, you're gonna wanna tune in. So yesterday I told you that, you know, I feel like a quiz is in order, right? We need to like put out this quiz to see, like, do you make the cut? Do you have what it takes to be a furniture flipper? Finding stuff, junk and stuff, and then reselling it for profit? Because it does take a certain kind of person. Did you ever hear people that say that, you know, uh, business isn't easy, it's hard, because yeah, it takes a certain kind of person, like I said, and if business really was easy, we would all have businesses, there would be businesses everywhere, and businesses would never go out of business, right? So today in the vlog, I'm gonna share with you my top, like when I think about, do you have what it takes to do this as a business, seven personality traits, the skill set, the qualities, um, and if you walk into this business, whether you're doing it full-time, whether you're doing it part-time, time or whether you're just doing it occasionally if you have this skill set then you're probably somebody who's cut out to be a successful creative entrepreneur number one you gotta be motivated oh my gosh when you work for yourself there is nobody that says hello Sonia Psst, get up Sonia don't stay up that late hello you gotta get up and you've got custom pieces to paint for people you gotta go out and you gotta find junk because hello if you're gonna be flipping junk you gotta be able to have the pieces to be able to work on right they're like your canvases you have got to take the time to go out and find them I really wish there was a meme out there one time with a bunch of furniture walking down dancing down the road I'm like oh yeah come to my garage right but we know in real life that we actually have to get up and we have to go do those things and you're probably thinking right now oh my gosh go into a junk store hello Sonia I got this but I'm talking about like when the honeymoon phase is over because you're looking to do this for the long haul, right? You want to be known as somebody who finds, flips furniture, does it for other people, fills a vendor booth. So you got to be a self-starter and you've got to be motivated. Your thoughts, your mindset, it's your reality. It's the reality that you live in. So are you going to approach this going, I can do this. I got it. I have confidence in myself because if you want other people to believe in you and support what you're doing, then you have to believe in you first. At the end of the day, you guys know that if you work at it full-time hours, just like you would a traditional job, because think about it, when people hire you, they probably hire you full-time, part-time. So if you're working at it full-time, you're gonna work faster, you're gonna learn faster, and you're going to see full-time results come from your business. If you work at it part-time, you're just gonna go at a different pace than somebody else who's working at it full-time. And of course, there's also casual as well. That part is up to you, but you still gotta have motivation. Number two, you're going to have to be somebody that knows how to stick to your guns, okay? That's just like, I don't know what quality that is, just stick to your guns kind of quality, okay? Because, and that applies to so many different things. It applies to boundaries. Are you a stick to your guns kind of person when you have a piece that now you've just flipped and somebody says, oh yeah, I have it for 65, but can I buy it for 25? You're gonna to have to learn to stick to your guns, right? That's a boundary. You're gonna to have to be a stick to your guns kind of person when you're out junking, whether you're going to auctions or whether you're just frequenting the aisles. You have a certain budget, right, that you have to stick to. And you have to know that, okay, I can't go over this certain amount, otherwise this no longer is a profitable business, right? I can't buy things at retail and then expect to sell them even more. Stick to your guns. I'm not going to purchase more than I need because I already have pieces of furniture right now that I have to paint. Stick to your guns and get it done. Stick to your guns and don't pay more than what a piece is worth. Stick to your guns and say, I'm going to make this a profitable business. I'm going to do it. And then stick to your own schedule. And when your friends call up and say, why are you in your garage painting again on a Saturday? Come with us. Stick to your guns. Still get it done. But stick to your guns with whatever your dreams are for this business. Number three, be a learner. I guess just be like an open learner. Be willing to just like be open to whatever the universe throws at you because business is never guaranteed. There are no reservations. There's no guarantee somebody's gonna buy your stuff. There's no guarantee you're gonna try something and the first time you try a paint technique that it's gonna like work out perfectly. There's no guarantees that you're gonna to go to an auction and find every single piece of furniture of your dreams. You just have to learn to go with it and be open to receiving. Be a learner when it comes to learning new things. 
um, putting yourself out there to take the hours to invest back into your business, to learn to uh, study paint tutorials, to follow people that share. And when I say being a learner, like I don't know about you, but I will be a lifelong learner. I love to learn. Knowledge is power. It's fun to learn. It's fun to evolve and it's fun to learn and practice. So just like any other sport out there, when you think about people who are really good at what they do, whether it's hockey, they're just not, you know, they might have just a natural interest in hockey or a sport out there like you, an interest in painting junk and flipping junk, and you just love secondhand treasures. But remember, they practice too in the off time, right? That they had to practice maybe many hours in their backyard. And that yes, it is directly related. The amount of hours that you spend practicing and learning will directly affect your ability. So if you wanna be a better furniture artist, if you wanna be better at knowing your furniture types, if you wanna be just a better picker, all that, all the hours that you put into it, you will get better. Next one, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to fail. I mean, maybe this goes back to the whole motivation, but at least the mindset thing that you have to go into it knowing that you're starting out and you're going to learn. Never compare your very first chapter to somebody else that's at the middle or at the end. They too started their Facebook page with maybe one follower. Not maybe, they did, we all have to. But go into it. There's, a, there's something I always tell myself, and that is that I never lose, I always learn. And yes, if you go into it prepared, knowing that there are gonna be some days or some things that happen that you know just make it feel like a bad day, it doesn't have to be a bad day. A bad thing, a bad experience, a bad customer, doesn't make it a bad day, doesn't make it a bad week, doesn't make it a bad year, doesn't make it a bad life. And when it, something doesn't work out, you know what? You pick yourself back up and you look at it and you go, okay, what can I learn from this experience? Why is that piece not selling? Why is nobody paying the price that I have put on it? For example, part of marketing is going to, when you first start, is putting your things out there and seeing what people are gravitating towards. So maybe your very first vendor show, you don't get a whole lot of sales, but there's this one thing. Out of 10 things you have on your table, there's this one thing and you sold every single one that you had with you, right? You could look at that and go, okay, all right, well, I lost here, right? Because like nobody bought all my stuff, but you did, you sold something. So what is it about that one thing that you sold? Maybe you need to focus on that more. Think about businesses that are out there right now. It's always amazing. I love to read, I love to listen to podcasts. I'm an avid learner, I'm a serial learner. And if you listen to um, a lot of stories about you know, successful businesses, they, they even started off not even selling the same thing that they're selling now. Business is an evolution. And sometimes, you know, there are big companies out there too, like look at the big shoes stores and I don't know, all these big companies and they put out something and it's a flop. They tried something and it didn't go over well. So when we too, me and you, we try different things, don't be afraid to fail because you know what, if you've ever worked in sales before and have you ever heard the whole thing of where they say, you know what, you're going to get no's. Just go into it knowing you're going to get no's. They say you have to get like 10 no's before you get your yes. And you can look at it as like, I'm a failure or you can say, I get my, my pitch a little bit better. I maybe approach people a little bit different. And at the end of the day, it just gets me closer to my ideal audience, closer to that customer that loves what I do. Number five, make decisions quickly. Here is the beautiful thing about being your own business owner is that, and I'm a girl who came from the corporate world. Boy, I hate it meetings. Oh my gosh, I hate it meetings, probably because I'm a doer. And that goes with making decisions quickly, right? Do you ever be in like board meetings or meetings with other people and you just feel like you have these meetings but nobody can agree on the same thing? It takes forever. Well, here is the wonderful thing. When you are your own business owner, the board meeting takes place now right here, right now with you. You get to make the decisions. If you have a business partner, you know what? You can call them up right now. There's no red tape, right? It doesn't have to be hard. Don't worry about when it comes to picking a business name, write it a bunch. Look and see if they've been copywritten or trademarked. Find the ones that haven't. Find the ones that you could live with. Go on from there. Even I changed my name in my business and I'm still here to tell the story. Don't let decisions stop you in your tracks. I read something the other day and it said that, you know, when you have an idea, the closest you are to executing it, meaning that if I have an idea today and I start to put it in motion tomorrow, there's more of a likelihood of it happening, of it actually coming to light, to seeing the day of light. But every single day out further from that idea that you have, there's less of a chance of you actually doing it. 
I'm not talking about making knee-jerk reactions, but you know what? If you have an idea, sleep on it. Wake up tomorrow morning. If it feels good, just do it. Have you ever heard of the saying that um, planning without execution is just a dream? It's true. We can sit here all day long and be idea gods and come up with all these ideas, but you know what? In business, you've got to be a doer. We can all have great ideas, but at the end of the day, are you doing them? Number six, you can't take it personal. Yes, in business, you've often heard that we have to have a thick skin. And it's so hard because us as creatives, when we are the ones that are putting things out there, we're creating stuff that never existed before. We're making products that never existed before. We're doing designs that never existed before. We're, we're putting paint designs on furniture. We're flipping junk and making it, bringing it to a whole other level that's never existed before. We're doing we're taking something that's inside of us and we're putting it on something physical and then we're just hoping that people like it, right? So yes, we wear our heart on our sleeve, right? Because we want people to like what we put out there and that can be the scary part for a lot of us. We're scared. I remember my first business name had my name Sonia into it. Do you know how scary it was when I had to watch the actual crane lift the two pieces that made this ginormous sign and my name like fit on one half of it? I was like, holy moly, well there's no turning back now, right? Because like your name is literally on this it is like a baby it is something that we are creating and it's hard because we're putting ourselves out there and people are looking at us and we just hope that they don't see us fail but what if you don't fail what if you fly so go into it not taking it personal having thick skin and knowing that yes just like there's one side of the quarter there's the other side of the quarter just like for every opinion there's at least one more or two more or three more when you ask people your opinion when you paint something and you say hey guys what do you think do you like it when you open yourself up and you ask for opinions be prepared that people may come back and they may say no actually i don't like that color that you put on that piece of junk and no i would not buy it you have to understand that if you're asking for opinions, you could be getting opinions that you may not like, but that's okay because that's their opinion. So go into it knowing you can't be everybody's cup of tea, but you will attract your very own audience and your vibe attracts your tribe. You just keep being you and your community will show up. And the last thing is vision. Vision with action is where change happens. When you first start off in business, you might not even be knowing where it's going. When I started my business, I painted on the floor, I painted my house beautiful with junk, and then I started selling junk for profit. I started doing the same finishes that I was doing for myself, for other people. I started custom painting services. I got a vendor booth. Eventually I went on to have a storefront of my own. And now the junk monkey is born. When I first started this, I had no idea where it was gonna go. And maybe that's a good thing, right? Maybe that's a good thing because you learn a lot along the way. It prepares you for what's to come. So appreciate your journey because everything you do on a day in day out basis, it just prepares you for what is to come. We, if we all, or probably we all think about, oh my gosh, it would be awesome to have a million subscribers and followers and uh, I would love to be a speaker or for somebody else, maybe your success is, uh, you know, I wanna be known, I wanna have a brand in a big box store or whatever it is. If somebody came knocking on your door today and say, let's do it, would you be ready? So you have to appreciate the journey from the start to the part that gets really exciting. Sometimes you're just doing the work, finding out the techniques that you're good at, finding the niche or the niche that you really are drawn to. That sort of stuff might be the humble part of your business, right? That sort of stuff might be the work part of your business. And uh, it's, it's fun, but maybe there are days that it doesn't feel so fun. But just know that it leads to bigger things when you're consistent and you show up and you do that day in, day out. When people run races, there's always an end goal, right? If we just ran around a track not knowing where the end goal was gonna be, well, that would be like pointless. We'd be like, what the heck, where am I supposed to go? How do I know when the race ends? If, you were, if I were to travel right now out west without a map and I just took various roads and I had no idea where I was going to go, well, that would be a waste of time, right? Just know that the end goal for your business, you can have a goal right now but it can change. My goals have changed, but you at least have to have something to work towards. So do your homework. Think to yourself, what is something that realistically that I would love to be able to achieve in my business? That's a goal. Set your visions on that goal and then what I call reverse engineer. Work back and say, now what steps do I have to take to reach that goal? Vision also is a part of looking at, you know, okay, well, what's popular right now? What sold on my table today? What sold out of my booth? 
Vision is what challenges uh, have I had? How can I overcome them? What can I foresee based on what has just happened? So when you have vision, you not only focus on the day-to-day -day stuff, but you kind of forecast and you look and you put your head up and you look to see what's out there, where you want to go, what it's going to take to get there. And you will probably go on with vision to see and understand that you are more than just your product and what you are doing can be amazing. It's not about you. Business is about serving other people and doing wonderful things that can help make their life better. So have you figured out a product, a service, a solution yet that you are offering to other people? I wanna know below. Will you comment below? Tell me what you're currently working on. You can leave your link if you already have a Facebook page or a business website. I'd love to see what you guys are into. Tell me right now below, or maybe there's a few things that you're thinking about doing. I'd love to see what goal you've set for yourself and what you have in mind for your business. Yes, so those are my seven things that I think you have to be. The seven like traits, mindset, personality types, that sort of stuff that you have to be when you really wanna get into this world of now making a business out of flipping junk. So did you pass the test? Can you see yourself in there? I hope this gives you guys something to think about. I'll be back again tomorrow with some more words of wisdom for all of you who are also embarking on this journey like I have been flipping that junk for profit. Thanks guys for subscribing to my channel. I'll be back again tomorrow. Give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to leave me the comment below. What are you working on in business? What are your dreams? Do you already have your business going? Are you getting there? What ideas do you have? Let me know below. I want to see them. Bye.